are now currently in the middle of the eighth chapter of Kohelet, the eighth chapter of Ecclesiastes, and we have been discussing uh, an interesting thing, an interesting uh, difference, a, uh, a a contrast between the wise, the chacham, as we talk about, the wise person, and the powerful person. Okay. Uh, at first, uh, King Solomon referred to this as the king, uh, because that was something that he definitely had a good sense of himself. Um, but he, in the meantime, he's kind of moved away from specifically discussing a king. But it, it, the, the idea stays the same, that we're talking about the relationship between the wise person and the powerful person, somebody who maintains power over other people. And there was a distinct difference between the two of them. And the fact that the powerful person, their power is dependent, or is not dependent, their power is essentially limited. Okay, so when you have a situation where you have power versus wisdom, the wise person is going up against, <clears throat> sorry, standing up in face of power, the wisdom is able to uh, overpower the, the actual power. Uh, the reason being very simply that the wisdom understands the limits of power. And the one who's, who, ha who has the power doesn't necessarily see their own limits. Okay, now, as we pointed out, the, uh, the, there's two main factors that uh, limit the power of rulers, that limit the power of despots. Okay, number one is time, eight, right? The idea of time, uh, which is that, in, in, simply put, uh, the power of the despot is limited by however long they are given power. Uh, that can change very quickly. <laughs> ask the uh, ask the uh, the French monarchs how quickly power can change. Uh, Marie Antoinette, uh, she she learned that pretty quickly. Um, but also, there's a second thing: is the jurisdiction, how far their abilities travel, uh, how far they're actually able to influence other people, and what type of power they actually have. The wise person will be able to recognize those two factors: eight and mishpat, the time and the jurisdiction. And they'll be able to then manipulate those things to their benefit and basically subvert the power from the powerful. Now, uh, as a side thing, which is what we did last week, he told us that there's uh, the reason why power is so limited is because it's based on the frailty of humanity. And we pointed out that humanity is frail in two major ways. Number one is that as humans, we tend to be pretty bad determiners we, we have a very hard time determining what is a cause and what is the what what is an effect and how the effect relates back to the cause that's something that i would say actually we've gotten a lot better at uh, since the scientific method and and, and uh, the age of enlightenment i would say but nevertheless it's still pretty true we have a very hard time we can suggest things we can come up with ideas but those are always up for debate uh, i remember when i was learning uh studying a, a while ago um, in one of my master's classes, the that the, in sociology there's a there there's a paradigm of interpretiveness that there's some people that when they uh, when they study sociology they are work, looking to interpret things that are that are in existence. So that would be people researchers who go ahead and they are listening to the stories that people are telling. They're listening to interviews and things such as things like that. And then at some point in the 40s, 50s, 60s, there was a critical turn, and that switched. People started saying, I don't care so much about what the stories that people are saying. Those stories are influenced by other factors, and then they went ahead and reinvented the same stories, but from a different perspective. So even something as hard science, so to speak, as research in our days, it still has is up for interpretation at all points. And there may be future turns in the in the or cognitive turns in the future, uh, academic turns in the future as to rethinking the things that are re already rethought. So it's all up for debate and it's constantly in flux. I just think that's an inter interesting and important thing to keep in mind uh, that so people are very, we, we are not so great at figuring out what's the cause and what's the effect. It takes a lot of work and not, ever, not always are we even so successful. The second thing we mentioned was that people in general have a hard time relating to outside influences that come at them. Uh, it's not so simple for them to, for not us, them, us. It's not so simple for us to deal with outside a stimuli uh, 
we we don't necessarily have all the t tricks and tools to uh, deal with those things. So that's going to influence once again the, that those are frailties of the human condition that go ahead and they influence how we uh, how we determine power and how we uh, use power to uh, to control other people. So the wise person has the ability to look beyond that and say, "Hey, I see the uh, the the frailty of that system. I see where it's broken." And I'm able to uh, subvert that. Okay, so that's what we got into last week. That was just a quick recap. Uh, kind of, I just wanted to do that because we kind of rushed the end last week, ran out of time. So uh, with that, we can now move on to this week's verses, which is we're going to start with verse number nine. So let's get onto our share screen. Let's all look together. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so this is where we are right now. And okay, we are starting with this verse number nine over here. And it's also kind of a longer verse. Uh, he's been he's been sticking to longer verses recently, so uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, which means uh, that I have to keep the the, uh, the the text a little smaller than I like to, just so that uh, we can fit it all on the same page. And he says like this: Et kolzet, all of this. Ra'iti, I have seen, vinaton et libi, and I have placed my heart, l'chol ma'aseh, for all the actions, asher na'asad achat hashamesh, that are done, the, <clears throat> all the actions that are done under the sun. Eight, the time, asher shalat ha'adam ba'adam, that man, that humankind controls one another, that hu man controls man, l'ra lo, which is bad for him. Bad for them. Okay. Now, let me read that all one more time. Again, a lot of words. Et kol zeri iti. All this I have seen. Natonat libi, and I have given over my heart. Lachol masa asher nasa for all the actions that have been done, that are done. Sorry. Tachat hashamesh hashamesh under the sun. Eight. The time asher shalat adam ba adam that man controls man. Laralo, which is bad for him, for them. Okay, so we have a number of questions right off the bat over here. First of all, I'm not going to say there's not really a question. We've got this intro that he keeps on liking to do. Uh, he, he keeps on reminding us of his process. He's going to look at it. He's going to think about it. And it is, again, we're specifically, we have that constant codifier over here that we're talking about Tachat Hashemesh. We're talking about the physical world. Uh, that was actually showed up a lot more often in the first half of the book. It hasn't shown up so much now in the second half, but I have to look back. This may be the first mention of Tachat Hashemesh uh, since chapter seven. I'd have to look that up. I don't know. I can't, I'm not going to say that for sure, but I think that might be the case. And with that being, and, and so this is just another kind of intro to a thought, to a, a series of thoughts over here. Um, so that's just first of all, uh, which is interesting in and of itself, because before I get into what we're talking about, there, right off the bat, there's a a, uh, a a disagreement among the major commentaries what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, whereas Rashi, who's kind of the king of the commentaries, he says that all this I have seen is going on the previous thing. Uh, whatever we just spoke about. This that I just told you, this I've seen and I've looked into and I'm really going to think about it some more. Okay, The Mitsuda, who's one of the other kind of the other big commentary that we like to use a lot. He says the exact opposite. Et kolzeri iti, all this I have seen is an intro to the next piece. Based on how we've understood the book so far, uh, these kind of, these pieces like this, where he says, I'm going to look into it, I'm going to think about it. Those are usually introductions. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of inclined to the opinion of the Mitsuda that he's introducing the next piece. Um, the next piece, however, it's kind of a com it's kind of both because the next piece is also going to be built off what we were talking about. We're still going to be delving more into this idea of why is it the power is limited, but we're coming at it from uh, a new uh, another perspective. Okay, so uh, that's what I would say. This first half of the verse, not that much to talk about. It's just it's just our, our go to intro that I'm going to look into this and place my heart on it. We've discussed in the past the difference between looking at something, which is kind of an outside thing, and there's placing your heart, which would be a more internal 
investigation of that of the matter. Okay, but now we're going to talk about it. What is the thing? So he starts not with that with this word over here, eight, the time. Time. So we're saying that time, which we have already identified as one of the reasons why power is limited, time is a major frailty, is a major limit to human power. So that's what we're going to talk about. And I think it's important that he puts that word there right at the top. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the verse. He says the time that people control other people for their bad. It's like a strange thing. Why you could just just as easily have said as have said, um, I have placed my heart on this and I've thought about the fact that people control other people. Why does he throw in time? So I think what he's trying to say is in the broader general category of time, again, time being a uh, a, a check on the power of humanity, that idea of time has a kind of a subsection. That's what we're going to get into. He he titles the the discussion as eight as time. And so, what is this discussion about? He says, "Asher shalat adam ba adam l'ralo," that which man controls man for their bad, okay, for their for 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 their detriment. Okay, we've had this word shalat now a number of times. At first, it was not so common of a word, but now we're starting to see that it actually shows up quite a lot. Shalat is, again, an important, kind of good word to know in general. Shalat means control. Um, in the same way, uh, when we think, you know, I grew up in a, in a world of Disney. So the sultan, right, in Latin. The sultan, it, sultan is an Arabic word. It's the same word in Hebrew, shal, shaltan, okay? Uh, the languages are related. Uh, even in modern Hebrew, a re remote control for your television is called a shalat. So, um, so that's the word control, literally control. Um, so the time when control, when man controls man. Um, so this is meaning if we're talking about this general idea of people controlling people. It's interesting to point out that it is sometimes lo is sometimes it doesn't say sometimes I'm throwing in sometimes that it can be for their own detriment. Now the low is hard. We have to identify who's the low. Low is to literally to him or to them. Uh, so who's the them? Is it the person controlling or is the person being controlled? Uh, and if it, going through the commentaries, it definitely seems to be that a lot of people understand that the one who's whose detriment it is, it is is the person who's controlling, the person who's trying to enforce or to uh, uh, place power over other people. That is the person who ends up on the worst side of things. Uh, I would say it's not a hundred, not always true. You definitely have despots, right? People who are uh, despotic rulers who do uh, not end out so bad. You know, they they kind of live a, fr a pretty pretty good life. That's unfortunately a reality of this world. Uh, but there's plenty of times where that same thing, that same uh, action, it ends up being worse for the person who, who engages in it. Uh, he doesn't seem to flesh out this idea. He just kind of throws that out there. There's many times when the control that people place over people, the, the, the again, that despotic rulership is for their own, uh, uh, it, it is for their own, detriment they they lose more from that okay uh he hasn't spoken about why that is he's touched on it a number of places so far but he actually is not talking about that right right the second which i think is interesting uh he just kind of throws that out there uh but he's really kind of getting to the next point so while this verse is kind of left open-ended uh without a clear reason it does move on to the next. It's gonna it's gonna give us a little more context for the next verse. So I would say, if anything, he's setting a stage over here. All right, we're talking about people who are controlling other people, and we're gonna look at. I guess he's kind of like identifying where we should focus our attention. We're gonna look at how it's detrimental to them. Okay, not necessarily. He's not giving us a straight example right off the bat, but he's going to. In the keep, this is kind of the focus of our research is we're going to look forward to how this is not beneficial to the ruler, to the person controlling. Um, potentially, you could read the verse up other way that we're just saying 
that it's when other people control the people for their uh, for their detriment, for the pe- detriment of the people who are controlled, who unfortunately get stuck uh, under the control of another person. We're going to talk about that. You can read it that way also. It doesn't really, I would say it doesn't necessarily matter, but he kind of leaves this word low there as being either one. He didn't, he didn't give us Adam and Adam over here are both in the singular. So he does, and so is low in the singular. So the fact that he doesn't say Adam, Asher Shalat HaAdam Anashim, which would be a way to say people in plural, he just says when man controls man for I'm going to go with the, the, the simple translation of his detriment. Uh, so who's his? And he's not saying, again, I think you could read it either way, and it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, okay, so that at least we're setting the stage for we're talking about despotic rulers. Okay, and that's where we should consider. That's the stage that's being set for the next verse. Okay, uh, with that, let's move on to the next verse which is a doozy to translate. I tell you that much. Let's, let's see what he says over here. Okay. I, the amount of possible translations for this verse is, it's crazy. I mean, just trying to get my, wrap my head around it and preparing for this, I, I found that there's so many different ways to read it. Um, I'm going to give you kind of the, the simple tr- word translation, and then we'll go and kind of revisit it um, from a different, point of view. So let's, uh, let's at least get the words out. All right. Step one. Uvechein. And then. Okay. Everyone seems to translate Uvechein as then. Okay. Means literally, we, instead of saying us, which would mean then, it says Uvechein, the idea being that Uvechein kind of means flowing from the last thing, something now now is emanating. Uh, we have that word in our in our liturgy, on uh, the high holidays, when we extend the third blessing of the uh, of the Amidah, we add a bunch of paragraphs, and a bunch of them start with the word Uvchein, meaning it's talking about the story of what will happen in the end of days when when the revelation of God will come back to the world. We say, and then the righteous will sit and be happy, and then David's children will, will return back to the kingship. So it's and and then meaning flowing from the last thing we said. So Uvchein, and then. Ra'iti, I have seen, Rishaim Kvurim, buried wicked people, wicked people who are buried, buried in the ground, okay? Uh, like dead, buried. <laughs> Vavo, and they come, Umi Makom Kadosh Halechu, and from a holy place they go, Viyishtakechu Vair, and they get forgotten in the city, Asher Kain Asu, that they have that they have made. Gamza Havel, this is also futility or Havel, the steam that we talk about a lot of times. Okay. So again, this verse here is very hard to translate. So let's 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 get again, let's just go through the words there and we'll we'll take a, then we'll revisit it. it says of and then. Ra'iti, I have seen Rashaim Kivurim, the wicked that are buried. Vava'u, and they come. Umi Makom Kadoshi Halechu, and from a holy place they go. Vishtakechu Vair, and they get forgotten in the city. Asher Kinasu, that they have created. Gamze Havel, this is also Havel. Okay. And uh, before we continue, just a good, re- a good time to, to review Havel. Uh, usually is translated as futility. I don't like to translate it as futility necessarily. It's its own thing, its own idea. Uh, Havel is steam, literally means translates to steam. Uh, and the same way that steam looks like nothing and can, can appear like nothing, and if you try to grab it with your bare hands, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to be able to catch steam in a bottle, uh, or in your bare hands at least, but with enough work, and if you have the right tools, you can get something out of it. So it's usually our term for something where whenever Kohelet wants to tell us something that is basically impossible to get anything good out of. But there's always a potential for something good. There's somewhere in there, there's potential for good. He calls it help uh, Again, in the same way that steam is barely, it's it's practically not, uh, not, not uh, nothing you could do with it. It's not tangible. But if you have the right tools, you can do something with it. You can power a train with it. 
right? So um, it could it has potential for goodness, even though on the surface level, and in most instance, instances, it's going to be it's going to be futile, worthless, uh, not helpful. Okay, so that's just got that out of the way. And in in, in reviewing this verse, I'm just going to refer to that as Abel. I'm not going to translate it again. Okay, uh, this in this round, <laughs> in this uh, in this class. Um, so again, we've got this strange verse over here. Do we have? At first glance, it looks like we've got dead men walking. You know, we've got the the uh, the buried wicked people who are now coming and going from a holy place. I don't know. Does that make sense? It's a strange thing to say to to uh, to express. We've got this also this strange word construction va va u, and they come um, instead of vivo. Now, I'm not a I'm not necessarily a a master of Hebrew grammar. But it would seem to be that this this vav, the first letter here, should not have this this uh, vowelization. It should ooh, it should be u ba u, right? The this should be a u sound instead of a va sound, and this should be a base instead of a vase. It should be a a a hard b sound. So something's funny about that word right there. Va va u, again, a very strange strange word word construction. Another thing that that stuck out to me right when I was reading it is usually you would say they come and they go. So if they're coming and they're going, they're going to somewhere, right? They're coming from somewhere perhaps, and they're go, going to somewhere. But instead we place the going on the place where they're coming from. <laughs> okay, hope this is making sense. He says, Umi makom kadosh And from a holy place, they are going not coming they're going okay that's a very strange thing it should i it, you know if i was just wanted to say they're coming from a holy place i'd say uvo mi mima kom kadosh or if i wanted to say they're going to a holy place i would say uli makom kadosh yahalif they're going to a holy place but he doesn't say that he says they're coming period and from a holy place they are going to where i don't know so that's again a strange thing and again, we got a city kind of showing up in the middle of everything. And finally, one kind of uh, uh, semantics question over here is Asher Kain Asu, that which they have done. Kane seems to make a put a positive twist on something. Kane is usually a positive, not a negative. Uh, so it'd be also a strange thing if we're talking about bad people, that which they have done. Wouldn't we just say Asher Asu, that they have done, which would imply the bad things that they've done? Uh, but instead, we're saying, that they are, they are, there, there's something almost positive over here. Um, and yeah, so again, what's who are these buried wicked people? What's the holy place? Where's the city? What's the positive things that they have done? A lot, <laughs> obviously, a lot of questions. Um, and that's why, again, looking through translations, you're going to find a multitude of translations that all say very different things as to what's going on in this verse. Um, I saw one translation that totally flipped the the the, the sentence structure all around uh, and said that the wicked people they die after they come from the holy place or they, they come from the holy place and there they die, uh, which I don't know even know what that meant necessarily. But that was they they flipped the 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 whole uh, syntax over here to something else. Which okay, it's a translation, but I, I don't see it in the words themselves. So with that, I think we could take almost another stab at this verse over here. And I think what we're talking about is that we're trying to, we're, we are considering the, the person, so we have the bad person. We've got this bad player, this bad actor who's going ahead and imposing their will upon other people against their will. And we said that's a detriment. Now, we didn't say who it's a detriment for. We said it's just bad. It could be bad for them. It could be bad for the people themselves. And some sort of badness is coming out of this despotic rulership. But now we're also, we're kind of switching gears to talking about what happens afterwards. So he says, I've seen wicked people buried. Okay? So the wicked person's actually out of the picture. He's kind of saying, again, we're in that stage setting state part, stage. We're setting the stage still for what this case is. And he says, let's put the dead person, let's put the person in the ground. Okay, we got the wicked person, they're kvurim, they're, they're, they're buried. 
Okay, now let's talk about what happens afterwards. Okay, what happens after a ruler, a despotic ruler, is put away, is put to, is put put to put to the earth? Okay, what happens then? Well, then we have some interesting things happen. Number one is the vote. They start to come out. Who's they? Everyone. <laughs> Everyone starts to come out of the woodwork. You know, uh, uh, when the, the uh, a great example of this is when Stalin dies. You know, when Stalin died in the whatever, what was the fifties. I'm now embarrassed. I can't remember when exactly it happened. When Stalin died, suddenly everyone's coming out of the woodwork is trying to take over the Soviet Union. You know, um, I mean, this happens consistently and constantly in every type of power grab, every type of power struggle. As soon as there's a vacuum created in the power, it immediately creates uh, a possibility for everyone, every Tom, Dick, and Harry to show up and start claiming, staking their claim on power. Um, I mean, you see it every, you definitely see it every eight years in the American political system. Sometimes it's shorter than eight years that you see the contender, the chief, the head contender drop out and suddenly there's a power vacuum. And that's when you get a whole bunch of people all showing up at the same time, making claims to the next, to the leadership. Okay. So I think that's what we're just referring to over here is I've seen it where the Russia is buried. The wicked person is buried, is put to death, put, put to the earth. They're gone. Va -va -oh. And, and this would kind of explain the strange word structure over here, and they come, not the, not the wicked person who's buried. They're not going anywhere. They're dead. They're in the ground. They're gone. But they, other they's, start to show up. Okay? Okay. And they come with a very interesting argument. Umimakom kadosh yahalechu. And they start to leave the holy place. And if anything, this is definitely uh, something that we can see with our own, with our own, our own human eyes constantly. Whenever you have these power vacuums, the first thing you're going to see is good intentions. Is people, actors coming with good intentions and saying, "I have the answer to solve our problems." Okay. Whenever that leader, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a despotic leader, but it's true because it's true by all power, all power, power vacuums, power grabs. But whenever the last person is gone, it creates an opportunity for a bunch of people to stand up and say, I, I'm the, I'm the right person for the job. And they always come with this claim of mimakom kadosh. They're coming from a holy place. It bothered me. What is this holy place we're talking about? Why a holy place um, that, that we're bringing up over here? And now it makes a little more sense. Why are we talking about a holy place? The holy place is the, the, the pedestal that they're placing themselves on. They say... Uh, you know, yeah, they're gone. Either they come with a claim of, uh, of yeah, I want to continue the legacy of so-and-so if, if the guy was a well-loved leader, or you say, I'm here to rectify all their mistakes. They, they, you know, good thing they're gone. Now it's time for a new age, a new dawn, a new morning in America, et cetera, right? So that would be another, another way to look at the same. Th th those, those are, I would say, two claims. But either way, it comes from this Mimakom Kadosh. They come from a holy place. So they come, right? After the, after the Russia is kvurim, after their shame are kvurim, after the wicked are buried, they, the other they, the other people from outside come, and they come from a holy place, a claim of holiness, a claim of self-righteousness, a claim of I'm here to fix things. But it's interesting because he doesn't place, he doesn't put the, the, the holy places where they're coming from. But rather, the holy places where they're leaving, and they're leaving from a holy place, meaning that they'll start at that point of holiness, but it's not long before an exit happens, before an exodus happens from the holy place. So even though they're coming, and that's their claim, and that's their stake that they're trying to claim on this on this uh, on this empty position, they are leaving. They're currently in the act of leaving the holy place. Yehalechu. That bothered me also. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't that they come from the holy place. It's that they're leaving the holy place. I mean, they start there, but they're leaving there. So I think that's also a, an interesting uh, idea that shows up over here, that they're leaving the holy place. So what happens when they leave the holy place? So now let's say <clears throat> that they get to their position. Let's say they actually assume 
for that position, they fill that that power vacuum that's left there. Well, we then we see what happens. The ishtaku ve'ir asher kinasu. They are they get lost in the city. They forget or they are forgotten in the city that they have made. Uh, that they have made doesn't necessarily mean the city itself. It's not in the city that they have made, but when they're in the city, meaning once they have assumed the position, the ear of the ear, the idea of a city being again in this marshal in this parable over here, the idea of the city being the power, the 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 glory, everything that they're hoping for. Once they get there, they forget or can for, they can be forgotten. Every it, what can be forgotten is everything that they've done. So all those things that they said as their as their resume, and they said, "Oh, we're here. I'm here because I'm the right person for the job. Because look at everything I've done, and I'm going to go and I'm going to fix everything and all that sort of stuff." Those things get forgotten very quickly. And that which they have done, the positive things that they have done, are forgotten once they reach the city. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a. That's a far cry. Uh, from the that's that's not too distant of a uh, of an explanation about what these words mean. That which uh, because asher uh, can very it very easily seems to be going on. That's what's forgotten. The um, ishtaku just to point out the the shoresh the root word over there is this letter shin, this letter kuf, and this letter ches chet. Right, so shachach means to forget. Vayishtakehu means, and they are forgotten. What is forgotten? The things that they have done. Okay. Once they reach the city, once they reach that that goal of filling that void of taking that power, those same people who said, as soon as the last guy was put in the ground, they come up and say, "I'm the right guy for the job because I'm coming from a holy place." Soon they figure out. Soon they lose uh, all those great things. All those great uh, things. All, all, their entire resume falls apart. Uh, again, this is something we see. We we are are fortunate, unfortunate, whatever you want to say. We 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 get to see this very often. We get to constantly see this reality of people showing up and trying to fill uh, power voids, uh, power vacuums, and uh, they come with these again with these amazing, great intentions. I'm going to fix everything, and you know it doesn't doesn't really pan out uh, whether uh, that was never their intention at all or whether it's actually the realities of power are actually not quite like that. Uh, they're not so simple. What's interesting is we are still, if you remember from the last verse, we're talking about the general concept of the limit of time. So this is the limit of human, of human power based on time. And he's Throwing in this interesting curveball over here. One of the facets, one of the aspects of the limit that time has on our power is the fact that people who come to that, what you think, you know, the, the rush is gone, right? The wicked person is gone. So, you know, first reaction is, yay, the, the bad guy is gone. But then you've got other people who come and they're, they look like they're trying to say one thing, but really they're, 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 they're leading you back down to a dark path, a different path, a similar path. It could be any sorts of things. Um, I'm always reminded of the fact that we, you know, the Americans uh, got rid of, a, of Saddam Hussein right, in Iraq. Um, you know, love it or hate it, that's what happened, right? <laughs> the, war, the war in Iraq that lasted for a very long time. Uh, it took us a long time to get rid of Saddam Hussein. And then once he was gone, what happened? So... I mean, I can tell you what I read, what you've seen the news, but I actually once had an Uber driver who was Iraqi. And I, I for some reason, I always, they, they always love to talk to me whenever it's, I get a, a Muslim or an Arab uh, or a Middle Eastern uh, Uber driver. They always like to talk to me because they consider the way like brothers, you know, the Jews, the, the Muslims were, were always friends. I, he said he was from Iraq and he actually still, still had a lot, of, a lot of family there. So I asked him, what are your, what do you guys feel about Americans, about, about the American, uh, in, you know, uh, involvement in Iraq. And he said, you know, of course, we, we, we said we hated Saddam Hussein. He was a terrible guy. We, we couldn't stand the guy. And we were scared for our lives a lot of times and all sorts of things like that. But just because you got rid of him doesn't necessarily help the situation. He at least provided stability. We always knew what to expect. It was the, it was the, the, the wicked, that, the bad that you know 
is better sometimes than the bad, than the mysterious, who knows what the next step is. And he said, more than anything, they were just upset that it left this power vacuum that was filled by tribal leaders who were always at each other's throats. And it created even more instability in certain ways, but it got rid of bad guys. So a toss up, you know, they, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. But I just thought well, that was an interesting perspective to get on a, on a, on a, uh, Pretty hot political topic, um, at least a couple of years ago. Um, so <clears throat> I think that's that's the 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 feeling that this verse is giving us is we're talking now. Let's look at that next generation of people showing up. You know, they claim to be coming from Mimakom Kadosh, from a holy place, but really, while they're coming from a holy place, they're on in the process of Yahalechu of leaving that place. They get to the to the to the city, they get to the golden palace, and turns out they forget everything. It's forgotten. Everything that they don't have done is forgotten. Okay, let's get started with the next verse. We'll see how far we can, we can take it. Um, you know, I could raise this the, the the text a little bit. I think, yeah, yeah. All right. Hopefully, that's a little easier to see. It's a little shorter of a verse, and it says like this. <clears throat> okay, this also is not. Uh, it's it's a lot easier verse to uh, to to translate. Uh, it says like this: I share that because ain naasa pitgam maase hara'a mehira. The matter of a bad thing, of a bad action, is not done quickly. Okay, that's kind of a a topsy turvy phrase there, but that that is how it's translated. It is not done the thing, the matter, of the bad thing, of the bad action quickly, okay? So, as we would say in English, put all the words in the right order, the reaction to bad actions does not happen quickly. al Cain, therefore, malay lev b'nei ha'adam bahem, the hearts of people are filled, la sot ra, to do the bad, to do, to do wicked, to do evil, okay? Let's read that again. Again, this first block of words kind of has to be read together. Because the syntax doesn't work in English otherwise. Because the reaction to bad actions does not happen quickly, Al came therefore, the hearts of people are filled up in them, la to do to do bad. Um, sorry, I'm just checking out the chat over here. That is a great question. Uh, 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 Diane's question over here is, uh, does Kohelet address what does qualify a person as a good leader? That's a good question. I would have to put some thought into that. If it's something we've seen so far, he has done, taught, he did touch a, lot, a bit on it a little earlier in the, in the earlier chapters, uh, where the, it wasn't really the discussion, but he kind of touched on it. He might be coming back to it. I, it was a great question. I have to look into it a little bit more. Okay. Um, so, uh, but over here again, this verse is saying like this, uh, since the reaction to bad, to bad actions does not happen quickly, that's why people, therefore people, people's hearts are filled with this desire to do evil, okay? Now this could be just, just on its own, this could be its own lesson, right? The verse is telling us, that why do people do bad things? Because we don't see the direct effects of them, you know, happening immediately. So, okay, if you want to just walk away, that's your verse for the night. That's a great kind of self-encapsulated lesson right there, right? The, the One of the reasons, the reason, one of the reasons why we ever do anything that's not good for us is because we don't immediately see the reaction to it, right? Why do we eat donuts? Because we don't see how it affects our our, our weight and our sugar and all sorts of things like that. That's just the reality. We do things, we don't see the direct react, reaction to or the, the effects of our actions right away, the negative effects of our actions, and therefore we do things that we shouldn't do. Okay, that's a good lesson. Uh, but in the context of what we're talking about, it's going to have another meaning or a deeper meaning. But before we get into that, um, you know, we'll revisit the meaning, that, that other meaning, the, the, the continued meaning next week because we're out of time. We're running out of time. But before we do that, I just want to take a second on this word pitgum. Interesting word. It really only shows up, I think, here and one other place in the entire Tanakh. 
it shows up in the in the book of Esther. Um, it's it's not a Hebrew word. It's actually an Aramaic word. It, it literally translates to in Hebrew to a matter, a, a, a davar, a thing, where it's the 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 Aramaic word for what we would say in Hebrew, davar, a thing or an idea, or you know, uh, in in um, in the Aramaic, it's a pitgam. It's used in modern Hebrew, by the way, nowadays to refer to like a, a quote uh, or, you know, a phrase that people will say, pitgam. That's, that's a word that we use nowadays in that sense. Uh, in When we look at Esther, the book of Esther, and we see the word used, it's used in reference to the decree that the king says to at first kill the Jews on the 13th of Adar, and eventually that the Jews are allowed to protect themselves and fight for their lives on the 13th day of Adar also. So it's called Pitgam HaMelech, the decree of the king. Uh, so in that sense, Pitgam does kind of give this idea that it's a, a an effect. It's it's something that's put in place to rectify an issue. So in that sense, it fits very well in this in this verse over here, that the rectifying piece for bad actions does not happen quickly. Uh, it's not just the effect it's the it's the process of rectification does not happen quickly and that itself is part one of the reasons why we're not so we have a hard time connecting those two things and we don't see the direct negative uh, reaction to our actions okay um, again how it fits into the context of the verses we'll come back to it next week and we'll see it again um, let's go back to the regular screen okay uh, we have a great great crowd tonight i'm glad to see a lot of face a lot of people here a lot of faces um, thanks for the also uh, for for chi chiming in, um, and uh, we'll see you all here, God willing, next week.